This is so effing big on my screen, but it's what helps you guys see what I have actually written on the computer. Okay, welcome back to the channel. Today we are using quantum algorithms for portfolio optimization with QSIT or KISIT. Not really sure. It's IBM's Python package for writing uh, essentially quantum computing programs and it helps carry out quantum computations and I stumbled across this in my search for interesting financial uh, Jupyter notebooks and there is actually a blog called yes I'm leaving Google this here, it's called the QSIT Finance. It's part of the Q QSIT, KISIT, KISIT, I'm guessing that's what it is. The KISIT ecosystem that IBM has put together for their quantum infrastructure. And they have quite a lot of tutorials here. I'll probably make a bunch of other videos on these as well. So I don't want to spoil things too much, but you're more than welcome to go through this link and visit that page and look around. Um, the one we're starting with is portfolio optimization, and we'll be approaching the mean variance optimization. Um, I've covered mean, mean variance optimization in previous videos, but today we're just going to do it classically, and then we'll do it using uh, quantum algorithms, and uh, it should be pretty cool. I do want to state up front that you can use some of these quantum algorithms um, without having to pass it through a quantum computer. And I think it's because Kisset has a like a quantum simulation th th thing um, or that it passes through or it uses like Grover's algorithm, which I understand is heavily used in quantum, um, as well as some other variational algorithms that we'll be taking a look at in a minute. Um, but just know that it's real, it's pretty simple to actually just shoot this on over to IBM and they'll run it on a circuit that's available. Um, so this, this could actually work, but I don't want to spend the money to actually buy uh, computation on a quantum computer. Maybe when the channel blows up a little bit more, I, I absolutely would. But in this case, um, in my humble beginnings, we just got to start here. So the first thing we got to do is install all these different Kisset packages. So the main Kisset, Kisset Air, Algorithms, Finance, and Optimization. I've run through this before already, so it should go by pretty quick for me. Um, these are the imports that we'll be grabbing. And it's pretty quick. What's really cool about this Kisset Finance is that they have a, their own downloader from Yahoo, which I'm always happy to see uh, packages do this. Like FinRL has its own Yahoo downloader. It's really cool to see IBM has taken the time to put in their own data provider, um, essentially data providers that you can link to, and Yahoo happens to be one of them. And that kind of, in my mind, that makes total sense. Yahoo's a great provider here. So let's set up our portfolio now. Um, I'm going to use nine assets, and then we just set a seed. Um, we'll be looking at Microsoft, Apple, Google, Meta, IBM, Goldman Sachs, Tesla, Visa, and United Healthcare. Mostly tech stocks, but we've got a finance stock, and then we've got one healthcare stock. So I think that would, I think uh, that that's a good sort of range that we want to optimize here. And <clears throat> we run that and it'll grab our portfolio and it will plot it. And you can see this is our portfolio across time from 2021 to 2022. This is what those stocks performed. Cool, so it's real easy to calculate the mu and the sigma. And we want to plot the sigma here. This is what it looks like. These, are, of course, are the co this is the sigma covariance, right, of each one of our stocks here. 
All right, so now we want to set the risk factor. We do need to set a budget. In this case, we're going to assume we're going to spend all of the budget. And then we set a penalty, which just equals the number of our assets. So the number of our assets scales with, e with each asset that we're going to try to calculate, there comes a, a penalty that scales with our budget. Because the more assets that we need to buy, the more things that we need to uh, you have, the more options we have to use our budget on, right? So let's run that. Kissit Finance comes with a portfolio optimization that quickly just performs um, or just sets our portfolio up and then it changes it to a quadratic program. And you can see that's what it does here. Look, if you're going to ask me in the comments some questions on some of this quantum stuff, I, I do not know why you need to switch it to a quadratic program in order to set it up for quantum use. But I guess that's what we got to do. Uh, in order to help us understand the results, we've created this utility function here. Um, it will just print out the optimal selection of our portfolio list and then our value. Um, I've searched far and wide. I know the value equals the, the function value of our optimization that we do, but I, I don't exactly know how that translates over to like, is that the, I, I don't exactly know. So if someone does know um, what the function value of the optimization after we perform the optimization on our portfolio, like what that actually means in real terms, like, is it the risk? Is it the, I, I don't know, I don't even know what it is. I, I, I've done my best, I've looked. It says here, it returns the function value corresponding to the optimal value found in the optimization. But like, I guess what I'm looking for is what does that mean financially? So I don't, I don't quite know what that means and you'll just have to forgive me. Uh, I just came across this and I got really excited. So I'm making this video. So first thing we gotta do is you start with a classical approach. Uh, we'll be using this uh, algorithm here, and we print out our results. So it wants us to do, it wants us to select, you know, these stocks here. I don't remember what these are exactly, and then this is the value I'm talking about. Um, if someone could give me a real definite answer, that would be great. In the meantime, uh, as I keep looking over this, I'm sure I'll I'll learn what this truly means. But uh, if in the immediate a time when you are reading this or seeing this, uh, I'm, I, I apologize. I, I can't give you a solid answer on exactly what that value means, but it does tell us what the optimal selection of our of our portfolio should be. So now we're going to use uh, a different algorithm, and this is a quantum algorithm. This is a Kobalaya. Kobalaya. I don't think that's actually how you pronounce it but it would be this guy here. Um, it's a, oh, it's actually a wrapper around the SciPy. Gotcha, interesting. Very, very nice. Okay, cool. So after that's ran, it gives us a whole bunch of different selections so we can see the full result. So this is the uh, selection for this um, sampling VQE and and uh, you can see here it varies from our previous classical example and you can see that the value is a little bit lower than our classical example and you can see other values here and other different variations of the calculation that it's gone through So we'll also use another one. This one's called QAOA, and this is a quantum approximate optimization algorithm. And it's a well-known algorithm for finding approximate solutions for combinational optimization. So it makes it a perfect algorithm to be using for something like portfolio optimization. So let's go ahead and run that and see what kind of results and selection of stocks that it 
produces. You can see it has quite a quite a few different combinations, and that's because I've selected nine different stocks. So obviously, the more you have, the more results it's going to give you. Um, but you can see here, this is the other optimal selection, and it's about the same as the previous. This guy was 6'2", this one was 6'7". They all seem to say that we should get the tech stocks. This one was... The classical example is pretty spread out amongst different industries. I think this one might be the Goldman Sachs one. Um, but definitely Google... Um, I forget, or not Google. Definitely, what do we have here? Uh, Microsoft, I see. So let's return back to this last one that we have. Yeah, so uh, you can see this is selection, the value here. This is the optimal selection, but you can scroll through and see other selections and what those probability values are over here as well. Again, I tried to do some research on exactly what the probability means. Uh, it, like, I guess in financial terms, what exactly that means versus this value down here and how these two values together differs from like these two values over here. Um, so uh, I might need to read up a little bit more on mean variance to jog my memory exactly, but all right. And I mean, this is going to be a pretty quick video. So um, that's, that's all for now. I think in future videos, um, I'm definitely going to drill down on exactly, um, what these numbers mean. Um, I have an idea, but I don't want to say something wrong because we're in the area of quantum computing and I'm, this is my first time ever really encountering and working with those kinds of algorithms. Let me know if you're interested in me making more of these. I think it makes sense with the channel and I think it fits with the theme of the channel. Um, I'm trying to find something where we add like a quantum layer to like uh, another more classical neural network so that we have like an input and output layer that are tensor and then we pass the tensor through a quantum layer to see if we can get some cool results but I'm struggling to actually get it to work uh, consistently. Um, but hopefully we can get that video out to you soon as well. Um, yeah, I don't have much other much more to say other than go check out, you know, Kiss It with IBM and go check out these guys uh, who've put together a lot of these different tutorials here. Um, otherwise, I appreciate you watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.